By the end of this video, you will know how to answer COPD and asthma treatment related questions on the NBME exam. This will help you ace internal medicine pulmonology section. If you want clear understanding, you will have a photo of the pedagogic material in the description below. The treatment for asthma can be divided into acute asthma treatment and chronic asthma treatment. For an acute episode of asthma, the best way to understand its management is to remember the mnemonic asthma. In any episode of acute asthma, we use three treatments, namely albuterol, steroids, preferably oral, and humidified oxygen. However, if the asthma attack is severe, we might add magnesium and anticholinergics such as ipatropium, a rare medication for treating asthma, namely status asthmaticus, is theophylline. The indications for ventilation or intubation are represented by partial pressure of the oxygen less than 50, a partial pressure of the carbon dioxide greater than 50, signs of respiratory muscle failure, cyanosis and altered mental status. Now that you understood how can we treat the acute asthma attack, let's go to the chronic management of the asthma. The chronic asthma management is dependent upon the type of asthma we are dealing with. A mild intermittent asthma is defined by less than two days per week of asthma attacks or less than two nighttime asthmatic attacks during a month. For this form of asthma we use the first step of asthma treatment, namely short-acting beta-2 adrenergics whenever it might be needed. Sabas are actually albuterol. For a patient who presents with mild persistent asthma, the second step for asthma treatment is represented by a low dose of inhaled corticosteroids and albuterol. The mild persistent asthma is defined by more than two days per week or more than two nighttime attacks per month. Then there is the moderate persistent asthma defined as daily asthma attacks. The management for moderate persistent asthma is represented by the third step in the treatment. Either there is a medium dose of inhaled corticosteroids or a low dose of inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta-2 agonists. The inhaled corticosteroids are represented by medications such as fluticasone or budesonide. The long-acting forms of beta-2 agonists are salmeterol and formeterol. The last form of asthma is the severe persistent form of the asthma. Here are three choices of treatment dependent upon severity. The fourth step of this treatment is a medium dose inhaled corticosteroid adjacent to long-acting beta-2 agonists. On the other hand, if the patient does not have the asthma under control, we administer a high dose of inhaled corticosteroids alongside the long-acting beta-2 agonists. Now we have the chance to add omalizumab or mepolizumab if we are dealing with extrinsic asthma. The last step, when even the fifth step failed, is represented by high dose inhaled corticosteroids alongside an oral or systemic form of corticosteroids and long acting beta 2 agonists. If you'd like a weekly newsletter with free summary sheets, then send an email to medicalperspectiveblog at gmail.com. Also, the NBME test in the pulmonology section, the treatment for acute versus chronic COPD. The treatment for 
acute COPD is largely represented by short-acting beta-2 agonists such as albuterol with ibotropium and oral corticosteroids. Oxygen therapy is indicated with a target of an oxygen partial pressure between 88 and 92. This is explained by the fact that the COPD patients are dependent upon the partial pressure of oxygen to modulate their respiratory rate. Their partial pressure of carbon dioxide is chronically elevated, therefore cannot participate in regulating the respiratory rate. If the patient has one of these three factors, namely an increase in the frequency of cough or intensity, an increase in the sputum production or an increased dyspnea, then antibiotics are used. When considering antibiotics, take a sputum culture, in severe cases of exacerbations, the patient is given a BiPAP. For the chronic management of COPD, the oxygen therapy is largely used alongside smoking cessation to decrease the mortality risks. These two therapies are the only ones that can impact mortality in COPD patients. The oxygen therapy is prescribed only if the saturation of oxygen is lower than 88% or the partial pressure of oxygen is lower than 55 mm Hg. If the patient experiences more than two exacerbations per year, we add an inhaled corticosteroid with a long-acting beta-2 agonist. And lastly, we give albuterol when it is needed. An extremely important prophylactic method for COPD patients is the pneumococcal vaccine. If you'd like more USMLE related content, then subscribe to the channel.